Hi everybody, it's Miss Hamill and I'm here to talk to you today about animal behavior. So when we are going through this lecture, think about the 10 themes of biology that we've already discussed and how it goes along with how animals behave. Okay, so the first thing, what is behavior? Well, it would be any action that could be observed or described. So it could be a reaction to some sort of stimulus or it could just be something that is embedded and natural to the animal or organism. Ethologists are people who study animal behavior. So if you study animal behavior, you are studying ethology. And all living things are going to respond to their environment somehow. So from the smallest bacteria to the most complex organisms, such as us, humans, we are going to respond to our environment. So a few examples, uh, bacteria. If you plate bacteria, culture bacteria, and the conditions are favorable for that bacteria, they are going to grow and multiply. If they are poor conditions, then they are going to die off. Um, plants, which are living things, are going to respond to their environment. One example is for sunlight, they will grow in the direction of the sunlight. They, you can actually see a sunflower moving in the direction of the sunlight. Uh, birds have many awesome um, animal behaviors. We'll talk about a few of them today, um, but they're really cool. And giraffes, they can stand just a few hours after being born and walk. And finally, humans, we have many complex behavior as learning. Um, we can learn many complex things, but we have a lot of really cool, innate, or natural behaviors, such as when we're born, we immediately cry. Um, nobody teaches us how to do so, but we will cry. We can smile without being taught to do so, and we can grasp things without being told to do so. And there's also a sucking, um, sucking reaction that babies have too. And these behaviors have a very close relationship with evolution. So organisms are going to behave in a way that will help them to survive. Okay, so just a couple vocabulary words. So how animals respond and move. Kinesis is going to be a non-directional movement in response to some sort of stimulus. So this is not moving towards or away from something, but maybe a slower um, reaction. So if you're cold, your body is going to move slower. If you are running, your heart is going to beat faster. Taxis, however, is going to be a directional movement. So it's going to be towards or away from a stimulus. Um, the sunflower that moves towards the sunlight. Um, one other example is if you fill a cup with fruit flies, they're going to all be at the top if you cover it. And if you flip that cup upside down, then the fruit flies will gradually move towards the top of the container. So that is taxis, actually gravitix is what it's called. Uh, right, nature versus nurture. Have you ever heard of this phrase and thought, what does that even mean? Well, nature is going to be the genetic influence um, or the innate behaviors that are embedded in an organism's genetic code. So innate behavior is going to mean instinct. So what is natural to the organism, they do not need to be taught how to behave the way they behave. Again, this is under, under strong genetic control. It is embedded in our developmental programs or the DNA of the organism. And they're going to develop regardless of the environment. So a baby smelling when they are born or when they're a newborn baby. That is an innate or an instinctual behavior. Organisms that migrate, um, they are going to have an innate response. When it is time for them to migrate, they feel a strong directional pull towards whatever direction they are supposed to migrate. And nobody teaches those birds or whales or whatever that organism is how to migrate. They just do so naturally. So that is a 
innate behavior found in many migrational animals. Another innate behavior um, is imprinting. So imprinting has to do with recognizing another as a parent figure. So our example that we're going to talk about is with ducks. If you have a clutch of ducklings, uh, clutch is the eggs, and they hatch, and the babies are going to think of whatever organism they see first as their parent. They are going to imprint on that organism. Most likely it's going to be their mother duck and they'll follow that duck around and they associate that parent with protection and food. This is a time sensitive phenomenon so if the mother duck is removed from the situation and the ducks do not have anything to imprint on, they're likely not to survive. Again, this is the evolutionary connection. If you remove the mother duck figure and insert another organism, let's say me, a human, the ducks are going to follow me around and think of me as their mother. So imprinting is important for organism survival. Um, sea turtles, they're really cool too. They imprint upon the beach when they're hatched. Um, uh, automatically, they're going to come out of the nest and go towards the direction of the light so the moon over the ocean and swim out to the sea so they'll crawl on the beach swim out to sea and it is believed in common to scientists to believe that the imprinting on the sand so that helps them to return to the the beach that they were born on when it is their time to have their babies Okay, nature versus nurture. Now we're talking about nurture, which are the learned behaviors. Now these behaviors are developed largely due to some sort of environmental stimulus. And it's going to be modified based on experience. So um, if an organism has a poor experience, they are going to alter their behavior and hopefully avoid that experience again. One classic example would be Pavlov's dog. So here's Pavlov's dog. He was presented food and then a bell rang. Or they rang a bell, I'm sorry, vice versa. They rang a bell and then they were presented food. Rang a bell, presented food. Rang a bell and presented food. And Pavlov was measuring the salivation of the dog. Eventually, when you ring the bell, the dog is going to salivate even when the food is not presented. Another example would be Skinner's box. This is called operant learning. And this box is crazy. It has levers, lights, and whenever the mouse or rat hits the lever, it's rewarded with food. Um, and other times it is hits the letter, lever and it is um, given an electrical shock or some sort of negative response. So the animal learns how to react and respond in certain situations. The first learned behavior we're going to talk about is called habituation. And this is when animals lose sensitivity to a stimulus after repeated exposure with no reward or punishment. So one example here is going to be um, when people go out into the wild to film wild animals, they are wild animals, sometimes they could be aggressive, but they tend to leave the people alone. Why? Because they get used to the people being there. So after a certain time period, they're going to back off and not even pay attention to the humans and just act how they normally would. And this is beneficial to the organism, so they focus strongly on the behaviors that are important or the stimuli that have a positive or negative effect for that organism. Another learned behavior is associative learning, and this involves recognizing relationships between certain stimuli and positive or negative effects. Um, so here's an example with blue jays. So if you, um, or I'm sorry, blue jays ate these orange butterflies and they learned that they tasted bad, so then they avoided eating those butterflies. And this ended up being protection for the butterflies, so this helped the um, butterflies survive. And then the blue jays would then in turn find other organisms to eat. So they're associating the bad taste 
with the orange color. Now, cognitive behavior is higher complex thinking and learning, and this is going to be common in few animals, actually, for few organisms. Primates, um, we are considered primates, um, chimpanzees, other apes, um, monkeys, and dolphins. Dolphins have a very large brain, so it has to do with a de developed brain, really. Um, so it involves synthesizing information to solve problems. And this is more prevalent, like I said, in certain groups of organisms that have larger brains that are more, more in line with thinking, higher complex thinking. So many organisms have been found to use tools. So this chimpanzee right here is using the stick. He's sticking it down into the termite hole pulling it up and getting all the ants out. So that is its tool. And these organisms here, these chimpanzees, are using a rock to crack open some nuts. Um, other animals that aren't as complex have also been found to do use tools. Um, sea otters, they use rocks to crack open um, oysters and clams. And parrotfish have even been found to use some tools as well. And Dolphins, they have a very complex brain and they can recognize one another. They have a language between the dolphins. They can recognize shapes. Um, if you look at videos on YouTube, you can see many awesome different animal behaviors. So the next one is social behavior. And agnostic behavior is going to be a behavior between animals of the same species. Sometimes it's between other species, but it's a ritualistic competition of strength and vigor to determine who gains access to a particular resource, be it food, mates, space. So they can fight with each other, it could be the loudest roar, it is just some sort of competition between organisms to show who owns the particular territory or whatever they are looking for. Now, I had a couple of videos. So there was one about chimpanzees and one about lions, but they're not working, so I'll upload them to our website. The next is mating behavior. I also had a really awesome video of the bird of paradise, which has amazing um, display mating behavior or courting behavior, but the purpose of mating behavior is to entice another member of the opposite sex into mating. Why? In order to survive and reproduce, pass on your genetic information. Um, these behaviors can include vocalizations, so um, loud calls of gorillas and other apes, um, grunting, um, roaring, singing of birds, it could be dancing. This bird here is going to dance around um, and display this awesome tail feather to attract the female bird, which is very plain. Strength competition and, again, displays. So when the organism has a difference in the male and the female, this is called sexual dimorphism. So there's very large difference between the two. So finally, Animal behaviors have played an integral role in the d evolution of animals. So again, it is the reason animals behave the way they do is so that they can survive and reproduce. This peacock here is displaying its feathers for its peahen Y, so it can pass on its genetic information. Um, orcas have found many complex, awesome strategies to hunt and they've been taught to teach their young why so they can survive and reproduce. These penguins here, um, I don't know if you can see it, they have incredible love story courting behavior why so they can survive and reproduce. Um, rhinoceros spend time with their mother for a really long time why again so they can survive and reproduce and finally our uh, mantis shrimp has beautiful colors, they're very aggressive and strong. Why? So they can survive and reproduce. And you guys, us humans, we have complex learning and 
we are here so we 